Hey guys, this video is about reaction mechanisms. So let's um, let's look at this um, this reaction here, the reaction between nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide to form nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. Um, we, we did a, some experiments and we figured out experimentally that the rate law for this reaction is this, that the rate is equal to K concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared. It's second order in nitrogen dioxide, zeroth order in carbon monoxide. Um, a possible or a proposed mechanism could be this, um, what we have down here. Now, when we're writing a mechanism, we write out what are called elementary reactions. Each step is an elementary reaction. And elementary reactions, um, there's, some, there's a few things special about them. First, um, because they are exactly what we're saying is happening, the rate law for, that, for an elementary reaction, not an overall reaction, but an elementary reaction, we can write just by looking at the equation. In other words, it's going to be rate is equal to K times the concentration of each of the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. Now remember, NO2 plus NO2 is the same thing as 2NO2. So we would write the coefficient as 2, so we, would, we, we know that the rate for this step here would be rate is equal to K concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared, or K1. We'll call K for this elementary step K1. K2, if this was, um, if the, the rate for this step would be K is equal to concentration of nitrogen trioxide times the concentration of carbon monoxide, and where the K is the K2. Um, that's, the, that's the first thing. Um, next thing is that when we're proposing mechanisms, we're trying to um, propose a step-by-step a -step process by which this overall reaction, one we're studying up here, might occur. Now, a, a mechanism can never actually be shown for sure to be the true mechanism. Um, <clears throat> but we can um, make sure that at least it makes sense, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, another thing is that whenever a species is produced in one step, of a mechanism in an elementary step, and it's um, used up in another one. For example, the nitrogen trioxide here is produced in the first step, but used up in the second step. We call that species an intermediate, and they, they cancel. Okay. So again, um, so, okay, let's, let's go to the next slide here. Next thing we're gonna talk about are catalysts. So. A catalyst, what it will do, what it does for you, is it increases the rate of reaction. Um, <clears throat> and the way it does that is it makes it easier for the re that reaction to occur by lowering the activation barrier. Um, an activation barrier is, you know, the, the energy that um, the reactants must um, attain in order to form the products. So this yellow curve here, okay, would be what the... Um, progress of reaction might look like without a catalyst. In other words, over here, so progress of reaction, what this means is that um, on the very left of this plot, x-axis, we have pure reactants. On the, on the, over here, we have pure products. So what has to happen is the reactants have to have enough energy to overcome this barrier in, other, in order to get down over here and form the products. And what a catalyst does for you is it makes that barrier lower which means it's easier for that reaction to happen. Typically what that means is that the reaction can happen um, at a lower temperature. Um, it also makes it happen faster. For example, um, this, the hydrogenation of um, ethylene or ethene. Um, it's just ethene, which is C2H4. If we add H2 to it, hydrogen, um, we end up with C2H6. Um, now a catalyst, okay, a catalyst, it speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation barrier, but it is not used up in a reaction. That's actually, that's actually really nice because when you use a catalyst, you don't need that much of it because it always gets reformed. Um, so one way to write this might be um, ethene plus hydrogen plus palladium. Palladium would be the catalyst forming um, ethane, C2H6, plus the palladium is still there. 
Now, a lot of times what we do, we have a catalyst and other things that we add um, that aren't, you know, that end up not being consumed. Um, we write that over the arrow. So we, another way, and just another way of writing this would be to put the palladium on top of the arrow. Okay, those are catalysts. Now, <clears throat> the molecularity. So in an elementary step, an elementary reaction, the number of atoms or molecules of reactants that must collide in order for the reaction to occur determines what we call the molecularity of that elementary step. And so, you know, what's happening in these elementary steps, guys, is the reactants must come together, and when they do, we're going to talk about this in a little bit in the next module, um, they have to come together, they have to hit, first of all. Um, when they hit, they have to have enough energy to overcome that activation barrier, plus they have to hit with the right orientation. And if that happens, then they form the products. Now, if there's just one reactant, um, then it doesn't have to hit anything else. Um, and that is what we call a unimolecular step. Uni meaning one, one, the molecular, molecularity is one. If two things have to come together to form the products, that's a bimolecular step. If three things have to come together to form the products, that's what we call a termolecular step. That's a very rare occurrence um, because if you think about it, you know, for three molecules to all come together at the same time with enough energy and all three in the correct orientation, that's statistically, that's, that's going to be a pretty rare occurrence. So reactions that require this are, are not that common, but it, it does happen. So molecularity, unimolecular, bimolecular, termolecular. So in a mechanism, when you write out the um, elementary steps, one of the steps is going to be slower than the other steps. Um, and this is sort of a bottleneck um, for the overall process because um, when you write out a mechanism, you're saying that the, the, the top one, the first reaction, elementary reaction, happens first, then the second one happens, and then, uh, then if there's a third, the third one happens. Whichever of the steps is the slowest, okay, that is a bottleneck, and that's the, re that's the elementary reaction, the rate of that elementary step. That's what determines the rate of the overall reaction. And um, that's what we call the rate determining step. So going back to our original equa um, um, yeah, equation, um, we propose this mechanism here. And if, the, if step one here, with the rate equal to K1 concentration of NO2 squared, is the rate determining step. If that's the slow step, then the rate of our mechanism, of our proposed mechanism, is the same as the experimentally determined rate law. Remember, we in the beginning we showed that experimentally we had determined that the rate law was this. Um, now, if the second step were the slow step, that wouldn't work. That would not um, have the same rate as is ex um, observed experimentally, and so that that wouldn't work. So, when you're coming up with a proposed reaction mechanism, writing out the elementary steps, two things must both always be true for that to be a reasonable mechanism. First, um, the rate law of um, the rate from the rate determining step must agree with the experimentally determined rate law, just like we saw. So, in our our first reaction, we saw there we um, we saw that experiments have been done. And they, they experimented to determine that the rate was equal to K concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared. And when you're proposing a mechanism, the rate determining step, the slow step, must have that same rate law. Um, and then the other thing that must be true is that when you add up all of the elementary steps, you have to end up with the overall balanced equation that we're studying. Um, now, there, one thing, guys, is that there's never just one reasonable mechanism. There's some maybe more reasonable than others, more likely than others. But if you're asked to um, come up with a proposed mechanism for an overall reaction, there's gonna be more than one correct answer. As long as these two criteria are met, then it's reasonable. Okay. So, um, when, so we saw so far with our proposed mechanism that the rate from the rate determining step does equal, as long as it's the first step, 
the experimentally determined rate law. So that first criteria is met. Now the second one, when the, we add up the elementary reactions, the elementary steps, they must equal the overall reaction. Now, um, from 101, hopefully you remember, but if not, here's a refresher. When you guys add up chemical equations, um, any species that appears on both sides of the arrow cancels. And algebraically, like if you have um, x plus y equals x, no, excuse me, x plus y equals z, and then z plus c equals d or something, you add them up, the z's cancel, right? Um, so here, we have a nitrogen, in the first step of our proposed mechanism, we have two nitrogen dioxides. In our second step, we, uh, on the reactive side, in the second step, we have a nitrogen dioxide on the right side. So one of these guys cancels with this. Those are gone in our overall reaction. We also have a ni nitrogen trioxide as an intermediate. It, um, it cancels too. Nitrogen trioxide is a product here, reactant here. This is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. This is on the left. They cancel. So when, when we write the overall, the, the sum of these equations, um, the stuff that cancels disappears, and we end up with nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide, forming carbon dioxide plus nitrogen monoxide. So yes, this is the equation that the overall equation we're studying. So both of our criteria are met, which means that this is a reasonable mechanism. Doesn't mean it's the correct one. It does not mean that this is what actually happens um, when this reaction occurs, but it's possible at this point, you know, so far. Okay, so here's an example for you guys. So this is a proposed mechanism. Um, um, and I'm ask, what I'm asking you to do is from this, write the rate law, rate equals K something, write the overall balanced equation and tell me what the intermediates are. So why don't you guys go ahead and do that and when you get an answer, come on back, go ahead and pause the video. Welcome back. All right, so first let's get the overall equation. So this species and this, this species cancels here. It's a product here, reactant here. This species also cancels. So the overall reaction is um, butyl bromide, this, this species right here, plus two waters because we have one here plus one here. Okay, those, those are all the reactants forming. Um, butanol, this stuff right here, C4H9OH, plus um, the bromide ion, plus the hydronium ion. Um, now the rate law, we're, we were told that the slow step, the rate determining step, was this first step here. So the rate is going to be equal to K times the concentration. This is a unimolecular step, so it's just the concentration of this reactant, just like this. And the intermediates, those are just the species that cancel. This one right here, and this one right here. And that's all there is to it, guys.